there will be double-digit increases as we reported during the summer and uh, rural counties like Grays Harbor where I visited are arguably very underserved. I mean, they finally have right. one insurer there. So what can you do for those communities this year to people who say, I can't afford if this insurance plan goes up double digits? Absolutely, that's the problem we're trying to address. The reason that insurance prices are going up double digits right now is because the president has been threatening that he is going to stop making what is called CSR payments that provide stability to the insurance market. So far he's made them, but now he's saying he's done. So insurance companies, when they look at their rates, know they're not going to have that, and they charge more for their policies. That's why people are seeing such huge increases. What Senator Alexander and I are trying to do is to assure that those CSR payments will be made so that the insurance rates will come down. But time is of the essence here. I wanted to get this done by the middle of September. We were making good progress, and unfortunately, uh, the Republicans all stepped back and said, wait, we're going to try repeal again, halting our negotiations so we are now past that September deadline and working every single minute against a deadline where these insurance rates are going in so it's making it extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. And I understand the CSR uncertainty. When President Obama was still in office and we saw a fluctuation fluctuation in different states. Washington's been stable and where it's worked very well. But what accounted for the increases in states like Arizona or other um, health care markets? So in, in state by state, as we sell insurance or as insurance is sold, different regulations are covered. Different states manage their plans differently. Uh, it was you know, a, a lot of different things that were going on in the market that, again, creates uncertainty. And insurance companies are businesses. They make their rates based on that uncertainty. If it is uncertain, they raise their rates. And we saw that across the board. The other thing that Senator Alexander and I are trying to do is work within a waiver system that's under the current law that allows states to be a little more flexible and apply for waivers so they can manage their markets better. That will help us not tomorrow, but it certainly will help us over the next year or two, and it's one thing I'm very focused on. Okay. A uh, couple more questions. on When you return to Washington, D.C., in light of this new order, what do you do, given your concerns, what tools or what can be done um, if you think this is going to be detrimental to the system, what will you be working on? Well, I am really working to try and get a bipartisan agreement with Senator Alexander that will address some of the challenges in the marketplace. I think Congress has to decide whether they want this instability. I, I will tell you the one thing I have seen across the country is people stand up and say, don't create more chaos, don't create more instability, don't take away the protections that are so important to me if I have a pre-existing condition or a child with serious illness, fix this. That's what Lamar and I are trying to do. The president's order today just sends more chaos to the marketplace, and I don't know the fallout of that. I don't know whether insurance commissioners will challenge that or it will be challenged legally, but we just need everybody to stop trying to play with everybody's health care and do the right thing, and that's what I'm focused on. And at this point, do we know how the plans would be changed in terms of essential health benefits or what could be? I am assuming, based on what I know of what he is saying, is that will dramatically undermine patient protection rights from the that the Affordable Care Act provides today.